Uh, today, I'm going to share the uh, latest tutorial we built together with uh, Evidently and uh, the, with Elena Samoylova and uh, Evidently team about this integration of Evidently and Streamlead. Four main uh, steps and topics today. First is uh, what is ML monitoring and when uh, do, we, do we need uh, machine learning monitoring uh, dashboards? Uh, what is Evidently and what is uh, Streamlead? So to just uh, cover basic uh, concepts. And then I'll show how it works and how you can apply it to into your own project. Okay. For each uh, machine learning projects, uh, mostly for projects that have uh, this production uh, running uh, system, right? When uh, our model generates prediction for some business process or uh, is used as a part of uh, some uh, product or application, <clears throat> we need to uh, monitor and understand how this model performs uh, at production. And uh, if something wrong, we can uh, be able to understand the problem and uh, somehow uh, fix uh, this problem on the model side or maybe on the data side. So this is where we need uh, this monitoring stuff. And uh, it's much better to have some kind of dashboard in where we can track all these uh, monitoring metrics in one place and understand them easily, right? There are different tools that you can apply for monitoring. Uh, there are evidently AI, Alibi Detect, that can uh, calculate some metrics that you can track for your models and data. There are some uh, tools that can monitor your systems, like Prometheus, ELK stack. There are other tools for visualization purposes, Grafana, Kibana. Power BI, et cetera. I'll briefly describe what is evident AI, how it works, and uh, the, the main concept behind. So this is an open source library that helps you to calculate different metrics uh, for your data model and uh, your targets. And then it uh, can export these uh, metrics into different fo uh, formats, like HTML, JSON, uh, Python dictionary, and after that, you can use it uh, in any way you, you like. The main uh, building blocks for evidently uh, monitoring reports uh, are metrics. So metric is a company that evaluates some specific aspects of your data or model quality. And uh, later in, uh, for example, HTML reports, it can be visualized in such a simple uh, widget like a table, a table format, or some uh, graphs like histograms or uh, scatter plots, etc. Uh, all these metrics can be combined into uh, reports. So reports is uh, like a combination of different metrics, and uh, evidently also has some metrics preset. So is it just uh, standardized uh, reports? with the uh, most commonly used metrics for specific uh, purposes, like uh, data drifts preset, a regression preset. So uh, we, uh, in our demo, for example, uh, we use a regression preset that uh, gives like uh, the, the main uh, methods for regression uh, applications, regression models. What else? Uh, also uh, evidently has test, tests and test suits. So this is like uh, very similar to metric, but uh, for test, it also has, uh, every test has also some condition that uh, compares the calculated metrics against uh, some uh, value, some threshold, and uh, like uh, use this logic to define whether you passed uh, the model or data passed this test or not. So using these uh, test suits, you can uh, organize and uh, design different uh, tests for your uh, project. To calculate metrics and uh, Build reports, you need two data sets. The first data set is a reference data set. Evidently, just take these uh, two data sets uh, and to calculate these metrics uh, for you and put into the uh, reports. For our dashboard monitoring app, uh, we'll have uh, a demo example with a bike uh, sharing data set. And our target, target uh, is um, rented at specific time point. 
and uh, how, how it looks like this this app, right? So when you run this app, uh, it has uh, three main parts. So stream lead is uh, like some software, it's library actually that um, allows you to use Python to generate simple UI, simple uh, website like this. And it has uh, like three main parts, let's say. Uh, first is a sidebar menu where you can have different links to different pages and uh, parts of your uh, UI. Then it's a header um, and the main part, this report. So uh, at the main part, uh, we uh, visualize our uh, evidently report here uh, or some metrics. And with the stream data, you can visualize uh, some data set uh, as a tables, or you can build custom data visualization and uh, add them in this uh, main, main uh, part of, of the page. Uh, for our demo app, uh, on, on the site menu, we have, uh, you, you just need to select the project. Uh, as a like pre-built project in this demo, we have this bike sharing project. And also you, we have uh, a template for your own project. So you need to just select uh, the project, then select uh, time period and uh, then select uh, the report you uh, you want to you want to use okay let me just uh, switch to this uh, example and show you so i just run this example so here's a bike sharing uh, project here's a period only one cal calculated here and uh, we have uh, four reports so data drift reports uh, model performance reports Etc. This report here actually is a, a single, uh, evidently report generated using a regression preset. So it has the main metrics and also some uh, distribution for uh, target and uh, bias, uh, etc. Inside this uh, demo, if you will download it to uh, to your machine and uh, if you want to run it, uh, we have the project directory and inside we, we need to create a separate directory for each project. So here we have the back sharing and this uh, template for your project. And the idea is that uh, you may have uh, any number of projects inside this directory. You can name it as you want. And everything, the only um, requirement here uh, to make it work, we need this report directory inside your project. And inside this uh, directory, uh, you may organize your reports also in different ways. So for regression models for bike sharing, because we have the data split it by uh, dates or weeks, uh, we found that it's convenient to organize them in the um, different folders named by uh, start and end of the, uh, for every week. We put uh, our, uh, our reports as uh, HTML files or organize them in some uh, subdirectories. Uh, also, uh, we, we added an uh, opportunity to organize um, reports or some parts of uh, large reports into the tabs. So for example, for uh, data quality reports that can be uh, very uh, low, so it's long HTML file, and uh, it may be not uh, easy to navigate for uh, different parts. So uh, we can just organize them in tabs. And uh, for this, uh, we just need to put these reports into uh, these uh, subfolders. So subfolders here, like data quality, organize every HTML file inside and sh show every HTML file, HTML report in the separate tabs. So this is an idea here to add your, your uh, ML project, you only need to copy reports generated with Evidently from uh, your project repository into the Evidently stream with repository. And that's it. And as soon as you do this, uh, um, Streamlit will just uh, parse this uh, new project report folder and visualize your reports. Uh, now let me uh, just uh, show you some code, right? How it looks like uh, inside. So uh, this is how this um, the, the structure of this streamlit dashboard example. So let me make it a bit uh, larger. 
So inside we have uh, two projects, bike sharing, as I showed you, and uh, the stream with your project, right? And um, like in, in your case, your, your project is uh, like when you just download it, it's empty. So we may uh, rename it uh, like uh, ML Repo project, for example. Uh, Okay, and if I come back to the Streamlit app and uh, update it, so we may find that in the selected project, we can find this ML repo, ML repo project. Okay, we can go uh, inside and we see some um, uh, reports here. So this is just because I uh, copied the HTML report I prepared before into this uh, reports uh, directory. You can see that the data quality uh, directory contains four different reports. It's a, it's a column summary, data correlation, data summary, and missing values, okay? So what we can do, we can uh, go back to our Streamlit app, navigate to data quality uh, folder, open it, and we can see this uh, column summary, correlations, and missing values. Uh, so these names of these tabs actually are uh, parsed from the names of these HTML reports. And inside uh, are the same, the same uh, HTML reports that we have here. So if we open this file in our browser, so it's uh, the, the same, uh, file the, the same report. This naming convention, convention to use this uh, dates here, I guess it's not necessary. We can uh, use some other names. It works. So you can organize them, for example, uh, like this is a train. You may have uh, test and train, for example, reports and to generate, generate reports on different uh, steps of your machine learning. Uh, project right and uh, you just save them in this structure update uh, this app and uh, yeah and you can switch between these different uh, uh, different reports for machine learning project we have this uh, train uh, stage right we develop model and at that part we can generate some reports for, then we move to uh, prediction stage uh, and uh, at the prediction step, we also can generate reports, for example, about data quality and data drifts. And uh, later, as soon as we get the uh, true labels, the ground truth uh, information about our target, we can calculate um, the model performance itself. And uh, it makes sense because these reports are gener generated at different steps and usually at different times. Uh, it makes sense to organize them, them into uh, separate folders. And uh, this will help you just to easily navigate uh, in, in this app. Uh, what else? I can just uh, show you some uh, code uh, about the Streamlit app, uh, how, how it works. So the Streamlit app, this uh, directory uh, has only three files. So the, uh, the main file, the app.py, actually is uh, pretty short and uh, it, uh, it's structured to make it easier uh, actually to build the uh, structure of this, uh, uh, this UI, the sidebar, header, and the main part uh, with the reports. So if we look into this code, we'll uh, see that uh, we also have here uh, that uh, function that uh, just displays side, sidebar header, then uh, the sidebar uh, selectors to select the project and uh, periods, etc. And uh, after that, we just display a report. And every report has that uh, header itself. Also, we have some utils that are just a uh, common function that, uh, for example, parse uh, uh, directory, extracts some names of the files, then add, uh, parse these names. So this is just a uh, simple stuff. Uh, 
and uh, also some specific uh, function that uh, does this stream lead magic to visualize uh, this uh, this uh, widget for selection for uh, reports etc so uh, and here we use actually only few uh, stream lead uh, functions for example uh, this is a code to display um, uh, now this one this is uh, one to display report and uh, it's the all this uh, complexity here actually is just to have uh, to visualize this uh, uh, nice uh, logo and uh, links add links to the, the repository itself if we will remove it like this so this function uh, becomes very short i hope it will work yeah it works but uh, without these links uh, and what I want to show you is uh, uh, this is how the uh, report selector looks like. So it's actually is a very simple uh, function, and we use only one uh, method uh, from the streamlit is a streamlit sidebar select box. And for this select box, we just pass uh, the names of our reports ever available uh, for the project, and uh, these reports can be. Uh, uh, if you are not interested to uh, change anything and you want to just try to uh, visualize your own reports, you uh, definitely don't need to go there. So only you need is just uh, copy your reports and uh, into directory under this projects uh, folder. That's it. 